Hi, Alison here from Azapati Property. I'm here to talk to you about property management and uh, hopefully provide a little bit of advice and some insight to you in helping to select the right property manager for your home. As you may be aware, there are so many property managers and agents around and roaming the streets of the ACT, myself included. You know, it's a huge marketplace out there for agents. It's really competitive. But the problem with that is for you guys, is that it makes your decision and your job in selecting the right agent that much more difficult. You know, what makes myself or the agent across in the next suburb different from each other? You know, what makes one better than the other or, you know, equally as good? You know, what is that deciding factor for you when selecting a property manager to look the after your The difference that instantly comes to my mind when it comes to comparing property managers and this really should be the number one question on your list when you are interviewing or prospecting for a property manager to look after your assets is their experience levels. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate experience or property management experience but life experience certainly does help. When I started real estate in 2003, uh, 17 years ago, I was, you know, the mere age of, of 18, 19 years old. Um, I was given a go uh, and I loved it. I'd always had that passion and that drive um, for property. Even as a young child, you know, my parents would drag me around to go visit all these people I didn't know. And the first thing I would do in any house I'd never been to was asked to use the bathroom because back then it gave me the opportunity to stick a bit through their house, see how they live <laughs> and, um, and, and make it my own little assessment on, on these people that we were visiting, uh, as embarrassing as that is, but that was, you know, what was, what drove me into the real estate career without me even realizing. So again, back to 2003, while I was given this job, I started off as a junior property officer um, for a agency in Queanbeyan that has since closed down. Um, and you know, the rest is history, but that history is really complex. Um, I haven't had too many jobs, um, since 2003 and now I think I only counted out of only have five positions. So many jobs over the years, but that's because I enjoy what I do. So I tend to stick around for a while. Um, and each one of those jobs has got me to where I am today. Now, my experience is quite extensive, 17 years in, in real estate in general, but real estate doesn't always just mean property management or residential sales. My, res my real estate experience includes government and commercial, it includes sales, it includes corporate, it includes residential rentals, leasing, inventory, staging, styling, renovation for profit. There's so much behind me in these 17 years of working within the industry that that is my difference. Other agents' differences will, of course, be different to mine. Some might be similar, some might be, you know, more advanced. Some might not have quite as many years' experience as me. But either way, everyone is going to shine in a different light. They're going to offer you different things. Their fees will be different. Some will be on fixed contracts for, you know, in line with the term of the lease that they sign for your tenants. Some, will, like myself, are open-ended. You know, some offer more competitive rates. Some are slightly more expensive. So the differences are endless. But what you need to do when you're selecting an agent are ask these, these simple questions. Who will be looking after my home? Question number two, after you ask how much experience they have, whether it be corporate real estate or life. And the reason you want to know who will be looking after your home is because the person that's sitting at your dining table drinking your tea or coffee right now may just be a listing agent. So when they go back to the office, your file will be transferred to somebody else and then someone else after that. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to be speaking with one-on-one -on -one the entire process from the initial meeting in your kitchen right through to when they hand back the keys to you after you know four or five years of tenancy because you're moving back in then you need to ask that question question number three will i be locked into a contract now 
Some agents do this, some agents don't. Personally, I don't. And the reason I don't is because I own it. If for whatever reason, you are not happy with the services I'm providing you, I don't feel like you should be penalized any further for wanting to move to a different agent. It's really that simple. In a locked in contract, you will be subject to exit fees, not dissimilar to a fixed loan with a bank. Clearly not as expensive, hopefully, but that is the basis of a fixed term contract. And that is a question that you do need to ask. And if you're confident with the person and you know there's no issues, then it shouldn't be a problem because you'll never have to have those fees implied on you. Um, but you really need to be confident with the agency that you're choosing, particularly if they have a fixed term contract in place. One of the last questions I would recommend asking for this particular episode or video um, would be how many times the agency or that particular agent you're speaking with has been to ACAT, which is the ACT um, Civil Administrative Tribunal um, for residential tenancies. Now, that question's important, but it will give one of two indicators. The first indicator you could take as concerning um, why have they been to ACAT so many times? What is not working within their processes or their policies that they're, they're in of regular attendance there? Or you could flip the coin and look at it as a positive thing, whereas they are in attendance there quite often because they're hard and they're fast. The reasons that you want to ask what they were actually in attendance for. If it's a constant thing for tenancy arrears, that's a concern because it means that their rental systems or their payment systems potentially are lacking in some way. Um, most agencies put all of their tenants onto direct debit, such as myself, um, and we have very minimal rental arrears um, within the as a party property portfolio. Um, and to be quite frank with you, it's been a long time since I've been at tribunal um, representing any of my landlords because I haven't needed to. Um, and that is something I do hold quite um, proudly, um, that, that badge that I'm not a regular there. Um, I, I, I believe that for me, it comes down to the way I manage my tenants the way I manage my landlords and the way I manage my properties um, that has kept me out of there. Um, no one likes attending tribunal. Of course, every now and then you're going to get a sticky tenant um, or, or even a landlord that's not happy with something and, and wants to push it right through. And that's okay. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, I certainly have the ability to be able to represent you at tribunal if ever so needed. Um, but attendance at tribunal, it's an interesting one and one that you should sort of touch base on. So I think I'll call it there for now. Um, it was actually kind of fun to make, really. So I think I'll be back maybe with something else. Um, drop a comment below uh, if you want me to talk about another particular topic. All right. Thanks. Bye.